conversation. I had so much fun, but we ran into, into some hiccups, to say the least. Um, so thank you again for joining me. I know. And no, uh, thank you again for having me. It was a lot of fun last time. Yeah, but I mean, this gave you some time to actually set up the Sony camera for uh, a live streaming demonstration. I think this is going to be better because now you can actually talk about that process and share that information with our viewers, right? Yeah. How do I look? How do I sound? You look fantastic, sir, just like <laughs> I last saw you in person, right? And uh, you, got, you actually set it up so we can see the Sony display, like what someone would see behind the camera right now. That's on purpose, right? You, you've done that on purpose. Yes. Yeah, ah, I did it on okay. purpose, uh, just so I can uh, prove a point in a few minutes. Okay. When we go to okay. our top seven obscure menu tips, that's our okay. That's our th that's our show today. All right, so let let's get this started. For those of you that are joining us, we're going to talk about top seven obscure tips for your Sony camera. And this is what I love, Patrick. You got stuff that you know you won't necessarily easily find on the internet collected in one place, right? You might find it here and there, but you're going to share some stuff that's, you know, pretty in depth, but not too difficult, like things that the average person can do with their Sony camera. Um, so let's not waste any time. Let's get into it. Give us your first obscure tip for your Sony camera. Well, I, th I think uh, just to preface, my, my idea for this is a lot of people online always complain about the Sony menus. It's kind of too complex and maybe the UI could change, but I actually personally really like how many options we have. It can be really intimidating to people because um, they may not know what the settings do or why you would use them. So hopefully over these next few days and weeks, uh, we, we can go through most of them. So my obscure tip number one is to change what you actually see on the screen right now. So you see basically my alpha display. So this right. is a normal is exactly what the back of my camera looks like. First thing I'm going to do is turn on what's called a clean output. So I'm going to just get up from my seat, go to the back of the camera. And please excuse me while I'm doing this because uh, I have to change the menu items on the computer screen which is backwards. So I go oh, to that really settings. this is really cool thing. I mean, now everyone can see the menus. This is amazing. Awesome. Yeah, on my display, it's actually back. The letters and everything are backwards. So it's going to make it doubly hard for me. But OK, I go into HDMI settings here. And that's on the tab that has the uh, toolbox. So that's your all your setting menus. I go right. into that. Then I go into um, HDMI info display and you see that it's on right now that's why you see right. all the information on display and actually on the camera if I push up on the control wheel it'll toggle exactly what's on the screen so I can have more or less information but for today's ah. purpose I am gonna turn this off and now you can see I actually have a clean output I was kind of oh, toying wow. with the idea of leaving that display on so you can tell actually I'm using a Sony Alpha camera right now to record yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, one yeah. thing I just noticed is that I think the Skype call, it, the, it's not your camera, it's not your feed. The Skype is actually lagging a little bit. So can I hang up on you and then call you mm -hmm. right back? And let's, sure. let's, just, let's just test that out real quick and then it'll give me a time to talk to our users here. So I'm going to hang up, I'm going to call you back and then we're going to do this thing. We're going to continue okay. from there. Yeah. So thank you guys for your patience, but I just want to make sure that well, the audio is good. I mean, you can hear him, uh, but I just want to make sure that the, the video has time to catch up. So I'm going to call him back uh, and he should answer my call. Are we back? We are back. So I can hear you. Okay. And now let me actually go to my little broadcast station here and <clears throat> make sure people can see you now. All can right. Can All everybody right, hear me? Yeah, just a, once one of my voice not four <laughs> yeah there you go there you go uh, awesome so thank you for that first tip that's a great thing to know because if you're plugging in your sony camera to use as a webcam you want to make sure it's not showing the display on your next conference call right give us your second obscure tip okay my second obscure tip is um actually something on the menu that's called an image jump setting have you ever heard of a setting like that gaijin no what is image jump setting Okay, so I'm kind of guilty of using my burst mode quite a bit. So I usually fill my memory card full of hundreds of pictures. But yeah. if you're trying to go back and maybe sending your favorites to your cell phone, how do you quickly go from picture to picture? Well, right. if you've never used 
a setting called image jump setting. I'm going to show you exactly what that is right now. So let's see if this tech works. Do you see on your screen? Oh, well, okay, nice. Yes. Yeah, so if you hit menu and then you go down to the playbacks tab, if you go down to the very last one there, image jump setting, by okay. default, image jump method is one by one. If you ch yeah. change that to protect only, mm -hmm. now when I push playback, you see, normally if I push left or right on my control wheel, right. it goes picture to picture. But yeah. because I changed the uh, image jump setting to front dial to protect only, as I'm rolling the front, I'll just let that play through. Okay, oh. so basically I'll, re I'll repeat that again. Normally, when I push playback, oh, let me yeah. just block my face here, so there. Normally, when I push playback, and yeah. I push left and right on my wheel or rotate this wheel, yeah. it'll jump from picture to picture. Right. And if you have hundreds of pictures, it's really hard to find all your favorites ones. Of course. But what I do is if I push playback, and then I protect my picture, which I set uh, to this custom button here. Yeah. If I roll my front dial now, this front dial, it will just jump from protected picture to protected picture. Uh, so this picture. is basically this is basically if you're shooting, you're out and about, and you've already found yeah. out uh, what your favorites are and you know which ones you really like. You can yeah. from there kind of isolate it so that when you go back to playback, you're not going through hundreds of pictures. You're only going through your favorites. Exactly. Yeah, that's uh, that's a great way to say it. Yeah. So uh. so I transfer to my cell phone quite often. So after I've taken a whole bunch of pictures, I'll protect yeah. it. I push play, jump from protected to protected, send only those protected to my cell phone, and I'm good to go. And if you're a professional, right. if you're using like image mechanic or that sort of thing, then yeah. you can you can set it to import only your protected. So there's a lot of cool things to do with that. That's a uh, image jump mode. Nice, uh, nice. I like Thank you. No problem. I think a, a mental note for next time, when I'm changing the settings next time, yeah. I'll go much slower so then no, people no can worries. catch up to where I am. No now worries. that I'm watching it, it's a little fast, right? <laughs> we'll keep hey, that in mind but we're learning. We're getting better. <laughs> yeah, we're learning. And listen, there's a little Sony logo. That's because I'm talking to Sony. And next time, maybe I'll use more of my Photoshop skills. I did that in the last two minutes before we went <laughs> yeah. live. I'll make sure there's a much nicer than just a outer glow and drop shadow. We'll, we'll take care of that. Uh, give us tip, obscure tip number three. Uh, are we on number three? Oh, yeah, we're on number three already. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, along the lines again of how do you kind of manage all those pictures, especially if you're an action photographer and you use that burst mode quite often. Well, uh, uh, the next tip, have you ever heard of a setting called display as a group? No, no. And this is what I've came to see folks. Okay. The, the things I've never heard of before, even as a heavy user, what is this display as a group? What is that for? Ah, uh, okay. So I'm going to play this pre-recorded menu item that I've recorded. So now if you hit menu, <clears throat> oh, so normally uh, I'm showing here, if you're pushing left or right, it just displays picture after picture after picture. And you can see from my memory card, I had over 10,000 on that memory card. So if you hit menu and you go again to that playback settings and you go down to the uh, third tab, okay. there's, a, there's a thing that says display as a group. So if you turn that on, now, if I push play, it displays it as one group at a time. So all your your uh. whole burst. If I took ten pictures of that burst, there'll be ten pictures in that burst. I mean, in that uh, in that. Ah, right, that right, right. Yep. So and if I want to see what this is, this is great. I'm gonna go out on a limb here, but if you're shooting a lot of sports or a lot of action, and you know, for example, when a football is snapped and you're you're bursting through that you know that first snap with a quarterback. This is probably going to be critical for that kind of stuff because you can go now play by play as opposed to image by image. Am I right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Ah. So now when you see that, 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 uh, that layered shot, if I push my center button here, that yeah. center button right here, then it, it automatically goes into the group and then displays only the ones inside the group. Ah, so let gotcha, me just play gotcha. my video one more time. Yeah. <clears throat> So uh, some of the ones that had the examples there, I only had two pictures in that burst or three pictures. So only go one, two, three, and then cycle again, one, two, three. So you can quickly go through those three. Now, personally, I love that because I'm not a professional sports photographer, uh -huh. but uh, I've, so you got to decide, do you like it displayed as a group or do you want to show it one by one, right? Right. So right, play right. with it. I personally love it.
Nice. Thank you for that. Listen, these are the gems that you guys came to see and we're going pretty quickly here, but you can always come back to Henry's camera on YouTube, go back, watch the entire video and mark the ones that are your favorite. Uh, and in the comments, let me know if there's anything specific you want to know about in a future video. Uh, Patrick, obscure tip number four. What do you got for us? Actually, you know what? Uh, um, I kind of want to add one more because we're in that... Um, I just turn this off but we're kind of in that genre right now about turning a burst mode I mean, in burst modes right so we showed you how to jump from favorite picture to favorite picture and yeah. then next we showed you how to display it as a group but there's another another setting in your camera called a uh, uh actually maybe i'll save that for next time uh basically it shows you exactly how long your buffer is but um, instead of digging right now, I think I'll just save that for next time. Nice. Sorry about that. I'm going to go on to the... That's uh, a tease, folks. That's what we call in the industry a tease. So a stay tease, tuned for that. A tease, a <laughs> tease. <laughs> What's your tip number okay. four? Now, this is kind of an obscure, obscure one. Have you ever heard of a setting called SWTVH? Is that my Wi-Fi password? That's is that is that what... <laughs> Yeah, that's actually what it's called in our menu, SWTB uh, slash H, <laughs> and what that stands for. Have you? So I'm guessing you've never heard of that before, no, guys. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, so what it actually stands for is switch vertical and horizontal. So I'm again, I pre-recorded this, and I'm going to play the video. So if you hit menu, and now if you go see their SWTVH, mm -hmm. you can actually set it to uh, um, autofocus point on and off. So basically, in a, let me turn this off, and I'll, I'll play that again if it went a little fast. And I promise next time I'll record myself doing that much, much slower. Uh, okay. But basically, let's imagine you're an event photographer. So if yeah. you're shooting landscape this way, then maybe you'll have your autofocus point up here or something like that, right? But yeah. when you turn to uh, shoot a portrait, let's say you turn it this way, and you shoot a portrait, may, uh, so now you're on a focus point here, maybe you want to switch it this way. Oh, so right, actually, right, right. Yeah, so I've seen a lot of people do it that way. As they turn it from uh, landscape mode to portrait mode, they'll furiously tap their, their joystick here to move that autofocus point up yeah. and then down. Basically... If you turn that feature on, SWTV slash H, yeah. now it will remember, first of all, where your autofocus point was while you're in a portrait mode and also where it was in landscape mode. So if I have it here in landscape mode, if I turn it to portrait mode, it automatically move it to where I left it last in portrait mode. So you can quickly move, it quickly remember and, and uh, move that autofocus point. Did that make sense? Yeah, I mean, there's different names for it, I guess, with different manufacturers, but I liked how you explained it because, you know, sometimes you'll look at these settings and really for any camera, any Sony camera, you'll look at some settings, you'll kind of skip it because you're like, oh, I don't know what that does. So probably it's not important to me. When in actuality, there might be something that's really useful to the way you shoot or the style and how you capture images. So thank you for sharing that. Because yeah, if you are switching between, yeah. you know, landscape and portrait uh, work, you know, often, where you're switching those aspect rate, not aspect ratios, but the the, the rotation of the image. Uh, that's yep. something that can be super useful. Yeah. So you could. There's two options for it. One is remembering exclusively just where the autofocus point was, and the second one is remembering where the autofocus point was, and also the autofocus uh, uh, type you are using, whether you're using zone or whether you're using a small, medium, or large autofocus box. So it yeah. can remember all of that. So yeah. again, it's it's, is it useful for you? Is it not useful for you? You know what? It all depends on your application. If you're yeah. a wedding photographer or an event photographer, I, I, I can see this as extremely useful, right? Right, right. Nice. Yeah, Thank you for that. It'll Thank save you, you time. And the whole point of this is how do you make your life easier with alpha, right? Yeah. And I think the value here, it's not about having all these seven tips apply to you, but even if you can get one of these things, and I'm, you know, like really being conservative here, even if one of these tips, it's these things that will save you time and compound that over all the shooting you're going to do, you know, it really, really adds up. So thank you for that. Let's go on to tip number five. What do you got for us? Sure. Yeah. So tip number five is uh, about auto white balancing. 
right? Oh, so, yes, yes. <laughs> so did you know that you can actually set different priorities for auto white balancing? Yeah, yeah, most cameras know this, but I want to know what you're going to say about this because <laughs> I feel okay. like it's a little bit different than what I'm thinking. Okay, so I'm just going to play this video first and then, uh, then I'll, I'll explain it. So if you hit again, menu, you can see right now you can set your white balance and white balance is where, of course, you can set auto or you can set, you know, all your individual types of auto, uh, um, auto white balance modes. But mm -hmm. right below that, you can see a, a auto a priority set in white balance. So by, by default, it's in standard, but you can actually set it so that priorities on your entire ambient scene, or right. you can set the priority in auto white balance to your white point. I uh, personally right, find, right. yeah, I personally find that if I set it on white point, it's the most accurate. So Interesting. actually, I had... Uh, so right now, I'm shooting right now with an A7R three, yeah. and I'm also shooting with a 24-7 G Master, which is actually incredibly important for this application. I, I guess I can talk about that right after this. But yeah. I had auto white balancing with um, priority in, in for white. Yeah. So when I looked at the screen, it was very uh, accurate, but you know what? I actually ended up switching it back to uh, the priority standard because in standard it wasn't as accurate, but it was warmer, and I liked that warmer tone, so I, I just switched it to standard. But in in normal everyday life, I'm, I'm shooting outside or I'm shooting my, you know, documentary style or street style. I actually like shooting in white. I have it more accurate. And if you want it warmer, then that's what editing software is for. But we're in a live video right now, that's why I'd rather have it a little warmer, right? Nice, yeah. nice. We had a couple of people just say hi to us in the chat. So hi to everyone. Uh, and again, if you have questions, these are the times. Just pop them in the chat. Let me know if you have any specific questions to your Sony camera. If there's something you want to figure out, we're a little ahead of time. So, hey, we have the expert here. We can ask him <laughs> right now. Put him in the hot seat. Uh, we can ask him right now. So if you have any questions, let me know and we will go ahead and ask Patrick here. Thank you for that. Let's move on to tip number six. Wow, we're in six already. Yeah, I think I'm going much faster this time because I rambled on last time. <laughs> no, hey, listen, we'll go through the tips quick and then we'll spend the last 10 minutes just catching up like two old grandmothers, right? <laughs> yeah. Actually, so since we have extra time, I kind of mentioned just a few minutes, just a few seconds ago that your setup, especially a lot of people are probably doing live streams right now because as like me, you're stuck at home. But um, the lens that you use is actually incredibly important. The the reason why I actually chose this lens, the one that's on there right now, the 2470G Master, uses what's called a, a direct drive autofocus system. So the direct drive autofocus system allows me to have like extremely smooth and very quick autofocus. And um, the first time we talked, actually, Gaijin, I showed you some of the autofocus settings yeah, in movie yeah. mode. Yeah, so I actually set this to quick, to um, uh, fast. So the autofocus moves incredibly fast because I don't need it to be dramatic, uh, yeah. uh, slow autofocus. I want it to be able to focus on me very quickly, right? So uh, sorry, I'm looking over this way so I can see what's on the display. No, so if no I go worries. this way, you can see it tracks me no problem. Yeah. There's a, almost no breathing at all on the background. There's no hunting. There's, yeah. no, um, there's no hunting at all. There's no breathing. As I move back, you can see the autofocus is perfect. And that's because of the autofocus motors we're using here, which is direct drive. Yeah. Um, just an FYI, if you're doing video like this, you want to look for a lens that A, either has a direct drive or, um, or some type of linear drive. Those are perfect for uh, video, especially and if it I, has something called the difference. A, I mean, listen, you know, uh, it's, you know, there's not as much of this like smoothness to mine as there is with yours. So I won't name what it is, but I'm definitely not using one of your fancy lenses. And maybe, <laughs> hey, listen, maybe you should send me some of these lenses for these streams. But, you know, there is yeah. a noticeable difference. And it really comes back to, you know, your overall production, right? You really want to get a little bit better over time. And these are those small differences. Maybe not for your next, you know, work meeting conference call. But if you're doing live streams like we are today, yeah, you want to look into these things to find out how can you make it that much more polished. So, yeah. Yeah, awesome. we have a huge history in video. So we've applied all of that knowledge to not only our cameras and sensors, but also to our lenses. Our lenses are made for 
our still cameras and also our professional video cameras all the way up to Venice. So yeah, yeah. Sorry, um, I'll stop rambling and have, we'll go I on actually, to what number are we on? We're, we're at oh, tip yeah, number question. six, but before we go to tip number six, I got a question here. And sorry, sure. I, anyone watching, if you see me looking off screen, that's because I'm looking at the chat. I'm not being rude yeah. to Patrick. He's my good friend. <laughs> I would never do that to him. Uh, but I got a question here. How can I switch between eye autofocus and face autofocus? So I'm assuming there's a way to kind of change the priority, right? Well, um, uh, I'm not sure if you can do it quickly. I don't think you can. You, you, there's actually a shortcut you can set to a custom button, and ah. but that one just switches your mode, like whether you're human or animal. Right. But if you want to switch between a face and specifically eye, uh, yeah. you're just going to have to go on and turn off the eye detection. Oh, okay, so face detection is on by default if you're on AF continuous focus. Uh, yes, oh, but you can turn that off because ah, you okay, may gotcha. not you may not want face detection in the video because maybe your main subject is not a face, right? Can like you, if you're recording... You, if you don't mind, can you show us on your camera uh, mm -hmm. so we can see where it is? Is, is, uh, is, your, is sure. your camera feed still connected? It is, but um, it's. Uh, I won't see what's on the back of my oh, screen. Right. It's it it display on my computer on my computer and my display is backwards so I'll be kind of yeah, yeah. clunky at it. That's why no I pre-record everything else. But I'm going to try to find it on, I have right yeah. here A7 III. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to try to do this as, oops, try not to break anything. Uh, <clears throat> let me try to get this as close as I can. I don't have a macro lens on right now. But let me just find it in the menu first. Yeah. And then, um, so you want to go on to, for the A7 Mark III, you're looking for uh, on now we're, the first we're doing this tab. Tuesday at a lunchtime, so again, if you're watching this after the fact, hey, just follow us at Henry's Camera on Instagram, on you know uh, Twitter or Facebook, and we'll be posting our schedules, and we'll be doing more of these as well. Or you can go to blog.henrys.com, and you'll see our full schedule. We're doing live streams every day, so be sure to join the next one. All right, so you found the menu, yeah? Yep, so that's on page six on the first tab. Yep. And then, by the way, all these things, if you find it useful, throw it into my favorites. That way you don't have to dig through the menus for them, right? Right. So now, if I go into there, I can actually set uh, my face priority uh, on or off. So if yep. you want to do, so as your question stated, if they want to do eye, uh, no eye auto focus, just face detection, then yep. you can turn that off. Ah, right? gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. And then earlier, you saw how I had that display on. So you yeah. can actually display like if that frame is on or off. I personally like to have it on mm. so then I can tell like, you know. So that if, box if, around if your head to show you which, uh, fa which face is in focus, you can turn that on or off as needed. Yeah, exactly. Nice. And then you can, you can also turn face detection on or off. So sometimes it's not always a face that you want to record. Maybe so then that way, uh, uh, you, you know, you can turn that on and off. Another thing too, which is really interesting, um, uh, I guess another obscure tip, I'll save it for next time, but I'll mention it now. You can actually register faces in your camera. So if you're shooting a wedding, for example, you could pre-register the bride and the groom. Ooh. So when you have a group, group picture, it automatically tries to default that geometry of face. Okay. Now, if it's a All family, right. you may have multiple people with similar geometries, so yeah. it might get fooled, but everybody generally has a unique, um, yeah. unique uh, face. All right. Except me, I have a twin. That. We're going to talk about but that my in the twin future. twin is not as handsome as me, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're running out of time, but we, we got we to okay. finish this list. Uh, yep. Tip number six, obscure tip number six. What you got for us? So we were out of bottom spots. Oh, okay, so here is um, something that's kind of close to my heart. And I'm mentioning this because I saw a bunch of YouTubers in the past talk about this. Yeah, and yeah. they said we did not have this feature. Because a lot of uh, uh, people using our alphas that are really into shooting video, they're like, oh, you know what? I hate putting that little, <clears throat> that little red button in the back. It's kind of uh, awkward for my big thumb. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's not great because I'm a, primarily a video shooter. Well, mm. you can actually set this shutter button to start and stop your video right, right? yeah so yeah. you turn your camera into video mode and use this button as a to start and stop again it's not the change your world kind of setting but yeah it's the setting that a lot of people out, uh, overlook so i'm going to just show you how that how you do that so again you go into menu 
And now on the second tab, if you'll go over to page three, you see movie with shutter. Uh, normally, uh, yeah. it's default off. You just yeah. turn that on. And yeah. now when so you turn So this gives you into... essentially more than one record button, correct? Like you now have yeah. multiple ways to start a recording. So especially for those people that are putting a cage around their camera and you know have things going in and out, you got multiple ways to go ahead and start your recording. Mm -hmm. You can yeah. start your recording with the red button, of course, the red yeah. record button, the shuttered button, either on your vertical grip or on your main camera body. And you can also get a remote control, uh, which you could use... Um, one of our new Xperia 5s for, or, uh, you know, you could plug into your micro USB slot. So there's a million ways to start it. Amazing, amazing. All so, right, we are down obscure? to our, we, yeah, that's pretty obscure, but I, super <laughs> useful. I think I would use that a lot. Uh, right. Our yeah, last yeah, tip for this, for this session, tip number seven, what you got for us? Oh, okay, it's perfect timing too. My last setting that I want here is about um, electronic first curtain shutter. Ooh, okay. So, Alec, yeah, um, uh, you know what? I, I, I specifically mention this because if you're shooting indoors, for example, say you're shooting a wedding and, um, uh, you know, during the vows and everything, you want to make a, a, a little noise as possible, right? Make sure you don't scare that little lamb, a sacrificial lamb away. So you run. Oh, that's a bad <laughs> joke, but I'm not married. So <laughs> you can't blame me for being scared. <laughs> but. Anyways, but uh, without joking aside, you kind of want to be really quiet for those important moments. Actually, yeah. when I watch news now and I hear that ja -ja 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 -ja, during like, you know, press conference, that sort of thing, it's kind of cringy now, right? So yeah. for situations like that, where you want to be extremely quiet. Now, if that venue is using LED lighting and that LED lighting dims using what's called a, a, a PWM method or pulse yeah. width modulation, then you're gonna get a problem of a banding. So on your comp on your camera screen, you actually see yeah, this black yeah. bar go up and yeah. down. So some people might not know how to fix that. A, if you're getting that, first you have to turn off silent shutter because our all of our cameras actually in our alpha lineups are using what's called a rolling shutter, right? Mm -hmm. They roll at different speeds. A9 ro rolls the fastest, of course, because it has the fastest uh, readout speed yeah. but in order to fix that banding first turn off your uh, silent shutter mode and then mm. if if it goes away perfect if it doesn't you got to turn off your electronic front curtain shutter okay and then that gotcha. will turn it into like you know your standard type of camera and you won't have any problem with banding at all and i did a video again to show you exactly how that's done Amazing. so if you hit menu again you see on the f second tab fourth page uh, on silent shooting, again, turn that off. So this is how you turn it on and off. Right? And the second thing, there it is, electronic front curtain. So if you are getting banding and you're not uh, using silent shutter and you're wondering yeah, why, yeah, yeah. Yeah. like, hey, what the heck is happening? Yeah. Then there's two electronics. On. One is the electronic front curtain shutter. Yeah. Um, you know, to be frank with you, personally, I've never, ever had to, to turn that off. And I've used all types of different lighting, including including using LED lighting from cheap flashlights to light up my macro displays to yeah. like really expensive setups for uh, advertising campaigns, right? Yeah. I've never ever had to turn that off. But um, you know what, it all depends on the transform, not the transformer, but the type of dimmer that's in that venue. And if yeah. they're using what's called a PWM or pulse width modulated yeah. system, then uh, if your shutter speed is not syncing properly with that, you'll get yeah. the banding, right? I love that tip because it's one of those things where you almost may never encounter it, but you might get to a place and then all of a yeah. sudden this is the one church or this is the one venue where they have the system and you don't even know how to kind of diagnose it because you've never encountered the problem before and how do you search for it and all of a sudden you're freaking out and you're about to put on a production so thank you for that this is one of those key things it's good to know you may not use it but just in case you have it in your in your tool belt uh we were gonna wrap up but i got one more question for you patrick if you don't mind uh of peter wants to know how many faces can you register you were teasing that tip uh what's the maximum uh -huh. number of faces you can register uh so, uh, hi, Peter. How's, how's it going? And thank you for the question. Um, that's actually quite a lot you can register. Uh, I'm just going to look that up very quickly here. Uh, face registration. Um, there's quite a few. Um, 
And I'm assuming mm-hmm. you can always delete these and add new ones depending on your yeah. event and where you're going. Yeah. And you can also change priority. Like, you know, you can always set the bride first. Oh, okay. That's cool. Groom second, yeah. mother in law last. <laughs> Who's mother in law? Okay, so Who's mother in law? Okay, I'm going to register her face right now. So, well, let okay, me see if I can do this blindly. So, this is how you register a face. Yeah. So I, I get myself in there, yeah. and then I shoot. Yeah. It's going to see it registered my face there. Yeah. And then I push enter. Uh, now, if I go into, oh, see how I'm trying to do this backwards. Face registration priorities on. Right. And now, if I go into there, I can change the uh, order exchanging. Yeah. You can see, uh, and it looks like uh, eight is the number nice. of registered faces. That's and you awesome. see, I'm number one right now and i can change where i am yeah so you know if i want to put myself oh i I guess it's there's only me here so i can i can only leave it on one but i guess this is this is cool because like you know especially in these times where people are at home and you know using their camera around the house and taking pictures you know their family you can prioritize like okay always prioritize my kid first like if my wife and kid are in the scene or you know prioritize my dog last or whatever it is you can have this set up and have fun with it even at home. So you're, and again, it's about those milliseconds, folks. And that's why I love having these conversations is that yeah. if you can shave off little by little the time spent, you know, uh, to capture the image, it adds up over time and really makes for a much more seamless experience, right? Amazing. Imagine, Matt. Imagine, imagine you trying to take a candid picture of your kid in a crowded area, yeah. like, and, and it's quickly and easily focusing on your kid. Yeah. That would be an amazing candid shot, right? I can, yeah. I, I'm, just, you know, almost mo- makes me want to have a kid. <laughs> and on that <laughs> note, we will wrap up our discussion, folks. Patrick, thank you so much for joining me today. I know we had a few hiccups last week, but we managed to get a little bit sorted out right now. And, uh, you know, you actually had your video demo. So people that are watching on YouTube, you may have noticed a one second delay on Patrick's feed, but that's because he actually loaded some videos for us. So thank you for that preparation. It was actually really cool to not only hear you explain it and why it's useful, but also see how to actually find these in the menu, you know, and, you know, thank you so much for that preparation. Again, be sure to check out Sony Alpha on Instagram, follow their, follow their content. And if you guys have any questions for future videos, or if there's a specific theme, maybe it's Sony tips for wedding photography or landscape mm-hmm. photography, let me know in the comments and we'll, hey, Patrick, we don't got anything else to do. So why not? We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll put it together for you. I'm here. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you again, Patrick. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you again soon.